Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent and in this video I want to discuss with you how photosynthesis in green plants is regulated. We will in particular look at the interplay between photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. Just let's quickly remind ourselves uh, how these photosystems interact and what they are doing. So we know that we've got Photosystem 2, P160, which absorbs light at, P at 680 nanometers. And we produce electrons in the excited state. They are sometimes also called excitons. And these excitons then are passed on through uh, soluble components like plastoquinone and plastocyanin to the photosystem 1 which uh, absorbs light at, P107, uh, at 700 nanometers and uh, then we go to uh, NADP and produce NADPH which then goes into the Calvin-Benson cycle. And um, here we've got a very interesting component, the plastoquinone. Once it receives electrons, this plastoquinone is reduced to plastoquinol and that is something that uh, we are going to discuss uh, in a minute. Now, why do we need a, a regulation? Well, we can imagine that sometimes the amount of electrons or excitons that flow from P680 from photosystem 2 to system 1 is more than P700, the photosystem 1, can deal with. And as a consequence, if there are too many electrons flowing from PS2 to PS1, PS1 might get damaged. So that's why we need to regulate the flow of excitons. Now, how is that <clears throat> actually accomplished? Well, it is done by a, a sort of a structural or a spatial separation between photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. So how does that work? When we look at the fine structure of a chloroplast, we find that the thylakoid membranes are uh, in different forms. We find that some of these thylakoid are actually stacked like pancakes here. And they give the appearance of the chloroplast a very grainy structure and therefore these uh, thylakoid membranes are also called grana thylakoids. And this is in contrast to the thylakoids that are not stacked and uh, these are called stroma thylakoids. And we see that uh, with most, in most chloroplasts of uh, green plants. Well, what we find is that in the grana thylakoids, like here, where we've got this pancake-like stacking, we find that the photosystem 2, the symbolized by these triangles, is accumulated, uh, whereas in the um, stroma thylakoids, so this part here, we hardly ever find photosystem 2. System 1, so this guy here, photosystem 1, and we find photosystem 1 only in the exposed areas, in the stroma exposed areas of the uh, thylakoids. Uh, and in a way this makes sense because uh, photosystem 1 produces NADPH and that is uh, important for the reduction of uh, carbon dioxide in the stroma. So we want to have our NADPH uh, directly delivered to the stroma. So that's one is uh, predominantly in the stroma thylakoids. And we also find the same holds true 
for the ATP synthetase complex uh, because ATP also needs to be delivered uh, directly to the stroma for the enzymes of the Calvin-Benson cycle. We also find ends, uh, uh, an, an, a light harvesting complex, this red thing here, but this light harvesting complex uh, too is tightly associated with the uh, photosystem 2. So photosystem 2 and the light harvesting complex interact and the light harvesting complex actually um, transfers the energy, so the energy here, the light energy, it transfers the light energy directly onto photosystem 2. And another property of the light harvesting complex uh, 2 is important because it keeps the uh, thylakoid membranes in the grana thylakoids, it keeps them together. It acts similar to a push button um, where these um, thylakoid membranes are held together. And it transfers the light energy directly onto photosystem 2. So in a way it uh, supports photosystem 2. Now if we have a lot of uh, electrons in the photosystem 2, what we find is that we increase the pool of the plastoquinol. So we get a high level of plastoquinol, that is the reduced form of the plastoquinone, and this plastoquinol actually activates a plastoquinol dependent protein kinase. And this uses ATP and it phosphorylates uh, a critical threonine residue here uh, on the LHCP2, on the light harvesting complex 2. As a consequence of this phosphorylation, we see a change in the conformation of LHC2 and it, it dissociates from the photosystem 2 here. So it can no longer direct the light energy onto photosystem 2. So photosystem 2 receives less energy and therefore produces less excitement. What happens is that through the formational change of the LHC2, it no longer interacts with both membranes here. So you see it only stays put in one membrane but it does not connect both membranes anymore. And as a consequence what happens is that we see what is called the destacking of the grana. Destacking of grana. And the uh, light harvest loses its association with the photosystem 2, so that was our photosystem 2, and it now associates with photosystem 1. And as a consequence, light harvesting uh, complex stops the grana from being together and it now transfers the energy onto photosystem 1. So in a way, the light harvesting does no longer uh, the exciton generation in PS2, but it now supports instead the exciton generation in PS1. And therefore it redirects the flow of electrons from PS2 to PS1 and uh, it supports um, the um, energy uptake in PS1. 
Now, electrons in PS1 then can go back in the cyclic photophosphorylation to the cytochrome tubes to produce um, ATP. So, uh, what we see here really is a reshuffling of the light harvesting uh, complex from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1 and it supports in this case when there is lots of electrons in the system it supports no longer photosystem 2 but it brings support to photosystem 1 and um, enhances the energy uptake by photosystem 1. So I hope uh, that it, this made it uh, a little bit clearer how photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 actually interact with each other and the key to that is really this light harvesting complex LH, LHC2 which can be phosphorylated and can respond to how much electrons are actually produced from the photosystem 2.